Kabu is on the tips of tongues ahead of its inaugural festival this weekend. And as anticipation builds to see exactly the kind of experience that will take shape, concerns over beach access have also been raised. DART Vice President of Special Projects and Partnerships, Kenneth Hydes, is here to address those concerns. Good evening, Mr. Hydes. Good evening. Thanks for having me on, on the show. Thank you for being here with us. Uh, very quickly, can you explain your role with Kabu, specifically you? Um, I've, I've been involved in this process from the sort of inception. Um, in more recent, uh, um, as we draw closer to the execution or delivery of the event, um, I've just been on, on board, um, mainly uh, community relations. Um, that ranges from neighboring uh, uh, apartment complexes to basically uh, government agencies, uh, just wherever is needed that outreach or um, you know, um, discussion to basically ensure that we are delivering on what is what is going to be the most amazing, amazing festival. Well, that means your air must be to the ground, and you must have known that fencing, albeit temporary, would have stoked the eye of some. So, I can... And on the beach, I should point out. You know yeah. beach access has been a concern lately. Be beach access has been a concern, and, and uh, I, I had the opportunity to talk a bit about this on air the other day. and. Uh, Yes, I, I, I appreciate that. I, I appreciate that people, anything that re, re, represents or resembles uh, uh, a threat or a challenge to um, the public's access to beach basically gets elevated. But I think we really have to understand what the fencing is at the festival. Every festival or event of this nature will have a a mechanism or a opportunity or a system of delineating between the participants or the people who have paid to go and the people, the general public. And I think that's one of the things, that, that's the primary thing that we're looking at doing here while not impeding access. So people are saying, okay, it's temporary. What's this to say that you won't try and do it again or somebody else won't try and do it again? The precedent that's set by a fence on the beach? Fence on the beach. And I think the, the mean terminology that really needs to be explored here is temporary, right? If there's going to be an event and there is going to be the opportunity for uh, a fence, a temporary fence, barrier, whatever, to be installed that basically helps with the overall safety of the event by basically clearing, clarifying, clearing that uh, line between those who are patrons and those who are public, it's always going to be beneficial. Um, th this event, uh, nothing like this has been seen uh, in the Cayman Islands before. I've been involved personally with a lot of the larger events. Um, my first induction to Cayman Bay was the um, Alicia Keys uh, uh, concert. And uh, with my role with Taste of Cayman, I've worked through more Taste of Caymans than most, most individuals. Because we should point out you were a director on CETA, the Tourism Association. Uh, and, and president of the association. Correct. So we've worked through this. On all occasions, there is that delineation. I, I, I appreciate the frustration of the general public or those who are expressing the concern. Mm -hmm. But I think we really need to look at uh, sort of what this is, what we're trying to actually do on this event. So you've addressed that it's a temporary fence, yes. that you know, we need to put this in perspective. Uh, that, that's the message I'm getting. I should point out that the Lands Commission has said that it has the correct permitting, they'll be monitoring the situation, they don't have an issue with it. Yeah, I visited the site with their inspector, um, Pendergast, personally. Um, because, again, we want to make sure that we're doing exactly what is permissible under the law with the requisite agents, agencies and agents who have the right for approval. And that's what has been followed in this case um, in the execution of this fantastic event. And so before we wrap up, I also want to address road access because that's one of the concerns that I'm hearing. Do we, are we going to expect a lot of traffic on Cayman's roads, particularly in that area, the Estee Tibbets Highway? on the two days in question? I think that this is going to be a, a huge learning curve. No, we've not seen anything this big before. 
and in doing this uh, you know uh, traffic management plan we've tried to think about every eventuality we've talked to neighbors we've provided access passes we've provided parking we've provided parking and ride we've talked to the public transport we've tried to cover all our bases could there be a possibility that something doesn't quite work absolutely that's why instead of enjoying the event there's a whole core of us that are basically going to be sitting there watching this seeing where the, where the challenges arise, basically trying to provide on-the-fly solutions. So for Cayman, this is another opportunity to differentiate ourselves from the broader region. You know, as a tourism, you know, someone who's been in tourism, we've, we've differentiated ourselves in culinary. We've got this opportunity where we're having best in class, right? This festival could be held anywhere, but it's being held here, and it's being uh, delivered for here and everyone has a role to play from government agencies to the the supporters of the event the sponsors right down to the patrons mr hyde we want to thank you for being here on cayman 27 news to address those concerns and undoubtedly everybody will be watching not just to enjoy the event but to see what lessons could be learned for future events like this one i think that's a good way to go all right thank you again mr hyde do stay with us because after the break more news